We're going to go over partially ordered sets. We'll see the definition and a couple examples, and we'll also see a couple of Hasse diagrams to represent these partially ordered sets. By the end of the lesson, there's a good chance you'll be able to read and perhaps create your own Hasse diagrams, but I will be focusing more on partially ordered sets in this video. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson focused just on Hasse diagrams if that's what you're looking for. So what is a partially ordered set, or POSET? Well, let's first think about the non-negative integers. Certainly, they are ordered under our usual less than relation. We would start with the number 0, and the next number is 1. That's the next non-negative integer. These two numbers are in order, and we could keep on going to 2, and then to 3, to 4, and as far as we want. If you pick any two non-negative integers, we could certainly order them based on which is less than the other, which one is further along in the number line. But an ordering on elements of a set does not need to be this strict. We don't have to have every pair of elements in some order. We could be a little bit less strict. And that's where partial orders come in. A partial order might only relate certain elements of a set. Not all elements necessarily have some relation to each other. Here is the definition, first beginning with the definition of partial order. A relation R on a set A is a partial order if it is a reflexive relation, an anti-symmetric relation, and transitive. Then, if we take that set A along with the partial order R, this is called a partially ordered set, or a Poe set. Here's an example of a Poe set from set theory. Let's say S is the set containing 1, 2, and 3. Then consider the power set of S. This is a set that we'll actually have our relation on. The power set, of course, is just the set of all subsets of the original set S. So this contains things like the empty set, the set containing 1 and 2, the set S itself, all subsets of S. Then our relation R, our partial order on the power set, is going to be the subset relation. I can just say that the relation is the subset relation, but let's just take a close look at R. Notice that it is the set of ordered pairs XY, where X and Y are both from the power set of S, so X and Y are both subsets of S. And we'll say that two elements, X and Y, relate to each other, and thus the ordered pair XY is in our relation, if X is a subset of y. Then the power set of s together with this relation r forms a partially ordered set or poset. Now why is it a partially ordered set? Well we've got our set p of s. It has been partially ordered because our subset relation is reflexive since every set is certainly a subset of itself so it's reflexive. Also the subset relation is anti-symmetric. A relation being anti-symmetric means that no distinct elements relate symmetrically. So no distinct elements relate in both directions. Said another way, this means that if X relates to Y and Y relates to X, then it must be the case that X is equal to Y. Again, this is because anti-symmetry means that no two distinct elements relate symmetrically. So if we have two elements that do relate symmetrically, well, they must not be distinct. They must, in fact, be equal. This is, of course, true of the subset relation. This is precisely how we typically prove that two sets are equal. If one's a subset of the other, and that's also true in the other direction, then the sets are equal. So classic example of an anti-symmetric relation. And of course, the subset relation is transitive. If X is a subset of Y and Y is a subset of Z, then clearly X is also contained in Z. And so indeed, X is a subset of Z. So subset satisfies transitivity. So that's what makes this a partial order and thus a partially ordered set. It's got a lot of nice order type properties. You can travel from one element to the next via transitivity. 
x is a subset of y is a subset of z, so x is a subset of z. And if two distinct elements relate to each other, they can't relate in the other direction. That's pretty important for an order. But it's a partial order because it's not required that all elements of the set relate to each other in some way. For example, if we consider the set containing 1 and 3, as well as the set containing 1 and 2, neither of these sets are subsets of each other. So the power set here, P of S, has only been partially ordered. Before we move on to our next example, here is the Hasse diagram for this partially ordered set. You may be surprised to see that it doesn't have any arrows indicating the direction of a relation, but that's one of the smart features of a Hasse diagram, is that it gets around including any arrows. The way it does that is by ensuring that if there were arrows, they would all be pointing the same direction, so in fact they're not necessary. In this diagram, our relation moves from top to bottom. So for example, the empty set goes up to the set containing 2. So I know the direction of this relation. It's that the empty set relates to the set containing 2. The empty set is a subset of the set containing 2. Similarly, we go up from the set containing 2 to the set containing 2 and 3. Thus, it's this which is a subset of this, not the other way around. Our relation goes up. You could make a Hasse diagram where the relation goes from top to bottom, or left to right, or right to left. Either way, it's great to make sure the relation is always going the same direction because that allows us to not need arrows. Two other nice features of a Hasse diagram. Notice that none of our elements have arrows connecting to themselves or lines connecting to themselves, indicating that they relate to themselves. That's because Hasse diagrams are for representing partially ordered sets. And in a partially ordered set, every element always relates to itself because partial orders are by definition reflexive. So we don't need to clutter up our diagram with arrows indicating those reflexive relations. We know they are there by definition of a partial order, so we don't include them in the diagram. Finally, you may notice that there's no line or arrow joining the set containing two, for example, to the set containing one, two, and three even though the set containing 2 is a subset of the set containing 1, 2, and 3. The reason there's no arrow there is that I know this is a subset of this by transitivity. Since the set containing 2 is a subset of the set containing 1 and 2, which is a subset of the set containing 1, 2, and 3, the relation between these elements is just a result of transitivity. And again, since I know partially ordered sets are transitive, any relation that results from that transitivity doesn't really need to be represented in the diagram. In the diagram, I can see this relation because I know Po sets are transitive, and I see that we can travel along edges from the set containing 2 to the set containing 1, 2, and 3. Since we can travel along edges to get from here to here, I know that this set relates to this one. And since we're going up the diagram, I know the direction of the relation. The set containing 2 is a subset of the set containing 1, 2, and 3. Of course, it shouldn't be surprising that the set containing 1, 2, and 3 is at the very top of the Hasse diagram because every element in our partially ordered set relates to the set containing 1, 2, and 3. So it's got to be all the way at the top since I've ordered the elements from bottom to top. And then at the very bottom is the empty set, because nothing relates to the empty set, since nothing is a subset of the empty set, aside, of course, from itself. All right, let's go on to one more example where we'll also define minimal, maximal, minimum, and maximum elements. Okay, so we're going to let A be the set containing just a handful of positive integers, and R is going to be the divides relation on A. So R contains all ordered pairs X, Y, where X and Y are both from A, and X divides Y. Then this set A, along with our divides relation R, forms a poset. Division is reflexive since every number divides itself, 
It's also anti-symmetric, because if x divides y and y divides x, well, the only time that happens is when x equals y. And certainly, division is also transitive. If x goes into y and y goes into z, then x would also have to go into z. So the divides relation on our set A certainly forms a post set. I'll leave it to you to verify those rules more formally. Here is the Hasse diagram for the post set. Again, this diagram is ordered from bottom to top. So we can go up from 2 to 4. That means that 2 divides 4. Notice how I can travel across edges to get from 2 to 24 which tells me that 2 divides 24. Again, every element divides itself, so we don't really need to draw those arrows in. That's part of what makes a Hasse diagram so elegant. And notice again that the set has not been completely ordered. Not every pair of elements have a relation to each other. There's no way to get between 3 and 4 by moving up the diagram. They don't relate to each other in any way. Remember, you've got to move up the diagram because that's the direction the relation takes in this diagram from bottom to top. 7 and 35, they don't relate to any of the numbers over here, which is interesting. This Hasse diagram has two disconnected components. And this leads to a few quick definitions. We say an element y in a partially ordered set A is maximal if y relates to no element except itself. So if y relates to you, then y must equal you. In our Hasse diagram, we can find the maximal elements at the tops of the components. 24 is a maximal element. It doesn't relate to anything except itself. So it's all the way at the top of its component. Similarly, 35 is a maximal element. It doesn't relate to anything except itself. Notice, of course, maximal elements are not unique. The definition of minimal element is similar. We would say an element x is minimal if the only thing that relates to x is x itself. So if u relates to x, x must equal u. These, of course, can be found at the bottoms of the components. 2 is a minimal element because nothing relates to 2 except for itself in this set. Similarly, 3 is a minimal element. Nothing relates to 3 here except for itself. And 7, of course, is also minimal. There are then the similar but certainly different ideas of a maximum element and a minimum element. We would say that an element in a partially ordered set is a maximum if every single element relates to it. 24 is not a maximum element because not every single element relates to it. Every element in its component relates to it, but 35 and 7 both fail to relate to 24. So even though 24 is maximal, same goes for 35, neither of them are maximum. And similarly, we would say that an element little m is the minimum of a partially ordered set if it relates to everything else. Again, there's no minimums here. 2 does not relate to everything, since it doesn't relate to 3, 7, or 35. And 3 doesn't relate to everything, since it doesn't relate to 4, 2, 8, 7, or 35. So there are no minimums here. This is in contrast to our first example. In our first example, the empty set was a minimal element. It's at the bottom of its component, but it is also minimum. It relates to every single element in the partially ordered set. The original set S, the one containing 1, 2, and 3, is also maximal. It's at the top of its component, and it's maximum. Everything relates to this set. This set is the maximum of the partially ordered set it belongs to. If there is a minimum, or if there is a maximum, those will be unique in a partially ordered set, which is a straightforward proof I'll leave to you. Let me know if you want any help in the comments. But that's it for this intro to partially ordered sets and Hasse diagrams. Hope it was helpful. Here's just a quick review. We say that a relation R on a set A is a partial order if it's reflexive, 
anti-symmetric, and transitive. Then the set A, along with that partial order, makes a partially ordered set. We call it a partial order because it's not necessary that every pair of elements in a POSE set are put in any particular order. You could have some elements, like we said this one and this one, that just do not relate to each other in any way. A Hasse diagram is a way of representing a partially ordered set that uses the features of a POSE set to cut back on the clutter of the diagram. In a Hasse diagram, there are no arrows representing the reflexive relationships between an element and itself because we know they exist. Same thing with transitive relations. There are no arrows representing the transitive relations. And in fact, we don't need arrows explicitly to indicate direction because Hasse diagrams are created in such a way that if they had arrows, all of the arrows would be pointing the same direction. The Hasse diagrams I've shown you here have the order going from bottom to top, but you could also go left to right or top to bottom. Let me know in the comments if you've got any questions or video requests.